G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Another quick painting tutorial. This one was filmed by Scott as he was working on painting the ruined version of the chapel from our uh, upcoming Ruins of Alaria uh, range that'll be coming out towards the end of January, early February. I'm not entirely sure. Keep an eye out on the Knights of Dice website, our newsletter and our Facebook page for, you know, announcements about that. But, you know, let's just jump straight into this. So starting off with this Duramax granite effect from Dulux, you know, this we get here from Bunnings in Australia, and, and it's just spraying the inside of the building, the flat wall where there is no texture. As you can see on the outside of this model, there's brickwork and all that sort of stuff. He's just adding a little bit of texture to the inside to just, you know, help and, you know, give the, uh, you know, the inside of the model a little bit of variation and some interest. A quick prime with a flat black paint. We've used fiddly bits in this case, but, you know, you could use whatever you want. Um, as long as it's flat black, you'll be fine. This gray primer from Fiddly Bits is a really nice paint. I'm not a huge fan of the black, but the uh, the gray is really, really nice. And as you can see, he's just dusting it on. We're not going for full coverage here. We want that black primer to, you know, uh, work for us. And so in this case, it's acting as a bit of a pre-shade. And uh, by dusting on this gray, instead of giving quite a heavy overcoat, we still retain that you know, that uh, uh, that black underneath it, giving us some tonal variation in the colors that's going down on top of it. So everything that Scott puts on top here is, is is going to be, you know, lightly applied so that we can take advantages of the steps that we're putting on before us. Balboa Gray from MTN94. These are wonderful paints. Um, they're all matte. Um, in the past, I have said that they are acrylic paint. They're not, they're in synthetic resin. Um, but they work beautifully and we've had no problems with anything going over the top of these other paints, washes, um, you know, they just work really well. And as you can see, like I said, you know, just uh, dusting the model down to give it uh, some tonal variation in the color scheme. The model will end up being quite white at the end. So we want some variation in it to give us depth. Stardust Grey is the next color. As you can see, burst, 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 just giving the model, mostly on the top areas, a little bit of that paint. And as you can see there, you know, you can see the tonal variation in this model here as he's applying these layers. Um, so starting off from that black, we're going to go almost to white to give us, uh, you know, kind of like, I guess, a, a, you know, a Middle Earth sort of look. Jace Blue for the roof here. Uh, you know, in hindsight, it probably would have been better not to glue this ruined section of the roof in. But, uh, you know, too late. So Scott needs to mask it off to get the paint in there without, you know, getting overspray everywhere. Now, I'm not convinced by his choice here of Chernobyl Grey to highlight the, the roof. Um, it probably was the, the closest highlight that we had available, but, you know, I, you know, I would have liked to have seen or preferred a much brighter blue color on the roof. Anyway, Scott likes that, so that's what he used. Ceiling white from Dulux in a little sample pot, cost a couple of bucks, and just a very quick dry brush on the top edges, on the top of those arches in the in the windows and the top of the walls, and just highlighting up to that final stage, just picking out on the very edges that white, which will help make the model pop. I'm slowly moving away from these weathering sprays from uh, Plastic Soldier Company. They're no longer available anyway at the moment, but Scott loves them. He uses them on everything. It is a nice way to add some very quick weathering and, and some shading to your models. Um, but given the fact that you can't buy them anymore, I've slowly started moving away from them. Um, but there we go. You know, for probably what took maybe 25 minutes all up, it's not an amazing model, but it's certainly very, very good. Um, it's certainly better than Bear MDF, and you know anybody can do it. It, lo it looks great. Adding on some rubble and stuff to the base of that model would, you know, really finish it off. Obviously, it's a ruin, and there's no rubble on there. Uh, you know, the kit doesn't come with the rubble, so we haven't shown it with the rubble. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing some of those, and you know, putting a little bit of effort into some of the builds that I plan on doing this year. Uh, so a little bit of rubble on that model would have made it look excellent. Uh, but there we go, another very quick painting tutorial. It is very quick and easy, or, or I, I should say it's very uh, easy to use some quick techniques to get your terrain, specifically MDF in this case, from unpainted to painted without a huge amount of effort. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you're all keeping well. I'll catch you next time. See ya.